All right, welcome back to part two of the Stable Diffusion series. Last time we installed Automatic 11.11 and got Stable Diffusion running on our desktop. Today we're gonna to be focusing on the prompt. Better organize writing out your prompt. You can break it up into sections. First, there's the subject. Then there's the medium. Then you can look at style. If you're interested, you could add a particular artistic flair to it. You can look at what type of resolution or scaling you want. And last, you could look at color and lighting. Each of these have a different impact on your prompt. To start, let's look at the subject. You may want to generate a picture of a woman. Go ahead and type in a woman and type generate. Stable diffusion using DreamShaper 8 and the settings we provided decided on this seed, this is a woman. Now, if we want more detail, we have to add that in to our, our prompt. So maybe we want a woman with silver hair. Now, as you see, we have a different image. It didn't just take the old image and change her hair color. We actually have a different image. It's a similar looking woman. Her hair is now silver, but she's wearing different clothes and has a different background. So just tweaking, say, your hair color can fundamentally change your picture. Given this is our subject, we may want to have her doing something. So instead of just putting a woman with silver hair, we may want to say something like a woman with silver hair walking. We get a picture of a woman with silver hair that happens to be walking. You can continue to play with your prompts here, but if you're not getting what you want, if you have something specific in mind, you've got to go with detail, right? We'll try one more prompt here. A woman with silver hair walking through fire. And as you see, uh, we keep progressing through, putting this woman into a different situation. Her face is slightly changing. We're getting different lengths hair, different types of hairstyles, different clothing. Uh, so every time we tweak our prompt, we're getting something different. So if you have something in mind or you're trying to steer towards something, maybe you guys can guess what we're trying to look at here. Uh, you, you want to be as specific as possible. So really what I'm trying to get is I want Daenerys Targaryen walking through fire. And now we have a picture of Daenerys Targaryen walking through fire. Now, I'll be the first to admit this isn't the greatest picture, um, but we're keeping our uh, width and height low so we can generate the images fairly quickly, given that we're gonna be constantly tweaking it. And another thing we can do after the fact is we can add in a high res, res fix, which will uh, help upscale this image and make it a little you know, less weird looking. Um, I'll go ahead and put in some settings here. Uh, we'll just upscale it up a little and see what we end up getting. So we didn't change any of our settings, uh, but we are upscaling the image. Uh, so this way, as you're going through and creating images, you don't have to think this is what my final product's gonna look like. Keep it at a lower resolution, generate to get close to what you want, and then start doing the fine tuning. So as you see, uh, the image that we had that looked absolutely atrocious, while may not be what we're trying to get to, uh, once we've upscaled it, it looks a lot better. So uh, don't be discouraged as you're testing your prompts. Uh, that's not necessarily what your final image is going to, to look like. You just think of it as fine tuning and getting close to what you want. And then you can get the rest of the way by changing some of your other settings. Uh, we may want to tweak this a little by adjusting some of the weights. So something that you could do throughout your prompt, not just to the subject, but to any of the attributes you put into your prompt, you can do something called weight adjustment. So I'm happy with the, you know, how much she's walking. I don't need her to be walking any more or less than what she's doing there. Um, but I kind of would like a little more fire. So if I highlight fire, I can do a couple things. I could type in a couple different prompts to change the weight. But honestly, the way I do it and the easiest way to do it is to highlight the uh, attributes you want to change, hold control, and just press up or down. So as you see, it uh, automatically puts the format, which is a parenthesis, uh, followed by the attribute, colon, and then a weight with a closed parenthesis. 
So what we see here is fire is actually weighted at 130%. We also could have held control and pressed down. And even after you've uh, modified it, you still can. You can bring the weight back down to one and you can drop the weight even lower. So like I said, I'm happy with the picture, but I kind of wish there was a little more fire in it. So I'm going to turn off the high res fix for now. Uh, we'll do that when we actually want to generate images we want to see and we will quickly generate a uh, another example just with the weight different on fire. The picture didn't completely change uh, but we are seeing more fire with the weight up higher. Um, one of the things we can do actually is we can compare what it would look like at different weight levels. So we can come down to this script and do an XYZ plot. And we can change the seed to prompt search and replace s slash r. Uh, the other two set to nothing, it's fine. We want to see what values we want to change. So what I'd like to see is how the impact of the different weight of fire has on my picture. What I can do is on that search and replace line, I can identify the first item I want to find and what I want to replace it with and then have a string of variables that will be replaced in sub subsequent trials. So if I place here, um, we need the first string to match what we have in our text. So we want to replace fire with fire weighted low higher, higher, and all the way up. So we can take a look at how the different weights of fire have on our image. Now you'll notice fire by itself is uh, the first thing we're generating. And in our string here, we have fire with a weight of one. Uh, when we take a look at our images, we would expect those to actually be identical images because fire with no weight and a fire with a weight of one should be identical. So with these settings, we'll go ahead and hit generate. And what we end up getting is a grid of images with the one variable we identified replaced and then the prompt run through the generator. So our first image here is what it looks like just having fire unweighted. And then the next image shows a fire with a weight of 0.7, weight of 0.8, a weight of 0.9. So we see that uh, slowly, we're getting more and more fire sort of appearing around her. And then a weight of uh, fire one actually takes the background away and adds some fire into the background. Uh, fire 1.1, 1.2, and then 1.3. We're getting more and more fire in those fire colors in our image. And as you see, fire with the weight of one is the same as fire without any weighting on it at all. It's the same image, uh, it's just a different way of writing the same prompt. Now you may have wondered, why did I stop at 1.3? Well, uh, part of it's because I, I don't want the entire image to be uh, fire focused. I just wanted to make sure I have enough in the background to make it interesting. But also I have found that uh, once you take fire, or not just fire, once you take any weight, to 1.4 or above, it starts to overtake the image itself and become less interesting. Uh, we'll go ahead and take off our scripts here and we'll just pump up one image of fire really high and take a look. I have a feeling we won't like it. I'll probably use the uh, 1.3 going forward. So yeah, not a bad image, um, but we are kind of losing some detail. Uh, the trees and things in the background are also just kind of becoming smoke and wavy. Uh, the whole image is really just starting to become fire itself. So not as interesting uh, once you get the weights above 1.3, 1.4. You've got to be really careful there. Another thing you've got to be careful of is uh, what items you're waiting. So we've taken fire up to 1.3, and I think that's what we'll stick at for the rest of the tutorial. But uh, you know, what if we want to up the Daenerys, or excuse me, the Daenerys Targaryen weight? Uh, maybe we want to have more of her features. Uh, so what we can go ahead and do is take that, and we can bump that up. 
So now we're weighting her at 1.3 as well as the fire at 1.3. And what you see is uh, it actually starts to get a little bit ridiculous. Um, you don't necessarily need to weight human elements higher. Um, it's more stylistic effects that you want to weight higher. Uh, you know, we start to get some weird detail on the clothing. I think the face is actually starting to look worse. And overall, you're not really going to get more of what a person looks like than what a person actually looks like. So if we take that back down, uh, we're back to our fire with 1.3. And then, you know, what if we weight up walking? Now, are we going to get an image where she's walking faster? Uh, is it going to be more walking focused on the image? And see, as uh, it's coming into view here, we're getting more focused on what she's walking on and the fact that she is walking. And actually, the fire details are kind of dying down. So what I found is if you start waiting too many things, they actually kind of cancel each other out. So the image starts focusing more on something you've weighted high, which probably means something else you weighted high originally is now competing and ultimately gets weighted less in the overall image. So, you know, I was happy with the uh, Fire 1.3. I think that's uh, a good start that we can take through for the rest of the uh, video here. The next thing we want to take a look at is the medium. The medium, just like in the real world, is how the AI interprets the image, how it was processed. So is it supposed to look like a photograph? Is it supposed to be digital art, maybe an oil painting or hand-drawn? You know, was it rendered out of a 3D engine? There's all sorts of different directions we could take this. I, I went online and found a few examples of different mediums that people use. Uh, let's go ahead and copy this over and we will do the same format we did with the weighting. So we'll open up a script, an XY plot. Um, instead though, we will take a look at some different mediums here. And we'll go ahead and take a copy of the uh, first medium and add it to the end of our prompt. So that way it has something to cue off of. So now we have the same image we're starting with here, but we're adding portrait and we'll substitute out uh, various other mediums. So let's go ahead and generate this image out. And there we go. Take a look at the first one. We have what it looks like in a portrait medium. We have a digital painting. We have concept art, sort of a realistic illustration, sort of a hand-drawn look, underwater, and even underwater steampunk. So it's kind of funny looking at the underwater here. Uh, we're obviously beneath the surface and we still have fire and flame shooting up. So you know, kind of a funny interpretation there. Uh, hand drawn is getting a little funny. Um, I'm not sure if that's supposed to be the smoke or if that's supposed to be burning trees in the background. Uh, the portrait actually looks really good even without upscaling. Um, I'm not necessarily certain that's the direction I was trying to go, uh, but we do have uh, digital painting, concept art, and ultra realistic all kind of look the same uh, textures are a little different but uh, it doesn't have a huge impact on the image itself so really you could go anyway um, i'd say portrait kind of takes you off on its own path most of these middle ones here are all about the same with a slightly different look to them i think i might pick a couple here and we can use that going forward Along with the medium, you may want to take a look at style. Now this isn't a hard boundary. A lot of things that might be considered a medium could be a style and vice versa. So really you can kind of clump these two together. Uh, but with style, we're going to take a look at things like uh, hyperrealism, uh, art, the modern impressionist type styles, textures, uh, details, fantasies, that type of thing. Leaving our prompt here, I kind of liked portrait. I kind of want to see the direction that's going. We'll go ahead and leave digital painting. Uh, let's take a look at the image again. We will go ahead and continue to generate with 
portrait, digital painting, and the ultra realistic illustration. So I kind of like those three and I kind of want to see what we can do to tweak those to make them better. Uh, but let's take a look at some of the different styles we can add on to this. So saved here, I have some styles and we will go ahead and make this another prompt, search and replace. I think we lost our H on our hyper realistic there. So what we'll do is we'll take the first term, add it up. Oh, we lost portrait up there. So we'll go ahead and add portrait up there for the first replace. And we'll go ahead and add hyper realistic up there for our second one. And we'll hit generate. Well, that took a bit. Let's take a look at what we got. So zooming in here, we have portrait, digital painting, and the realistic illustration across the top. And then we have our various styles here across the left-hand side. So zooming in, we can take a better look at how the prompts have influenced our images here. Uh, as you see going down, it actually can have quite an impact. Uh, the portrait seems to create uh, different images almost every time. The digital painting uh, seems less impacted by some of the prompts than others. And the ultra realistic illustration seems to have the least amount of impact by the various styles we can add on. They're all interesting, but we really should only choose one going forward. If we start hanging on to too many variables, we're going to get into a three-dimensional matrix here. Portrait, I think, maybe looks the best at this stage, but it's not really the direction I was hoping to go. Maybe the pop art and ultra-realistic illustration seems the most interesting, uh, mostly because while most of them are holding weapons, uh, they're either longer swords, which doesn't really jive with our character. And some of these actually get into dual wielding, and I'm not even sure what they are dual wielding. Uh, I'm not particularly thrilled with the patch of fire here behind it. There seems to be a few of them that do it. The digital painting under hyper-realistic is creating that. Obviously, the pop art and the uh, ultra-realistic illustration is creating that. I see it in a few other ones. So we'll just take a take a look at that, uh, see if that starts to change as we add on additional prompts. As I said, uh, most of these are interesting, and I'd like to see how we could take most of them into uh, you know further revisions. But we've got to pick something, and uh, I kind of want to get away from this weird dual-wielding thing that's happening. Coming back to our prompt, we'll go ahead and add in the two that we like. I'm going to go ahead and disable the scripts here and we will generate the image with the ultra realistic illustration and pop art features. So checking where we are now, again, I mentioned I don't like this fire going on in the background, but maybe that'll get cleaned up. The hand doesn't look amazing here, but it's okay. Uh, we can go ahead and test the waters by running a high-res fix on that to see what we look like if we were to upscale it. Well, we had a bit of an issue there. The render kind of froze mid-processing, so we had to restart. Um, but I was able to bring everything back the way it was and render out the image in high resolution. So let's take a look. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy with this. Uh, the fire is okay. Uh, I don't particularly love the fire splotch in the background, but as we continue to process this, that might just kind of go away on its own. Um, the sword actually looks really cool. It kind of looks like an Iraq, which, you know, a Dithraki would be using, so it's kind of appropriate for her. Uh, I doubt the sword will survive the continuous processing that we do, but as a kind of midway point here. This is a pretty cool image. Next up, we're going to look at artistic style. So I'm not particularly 
a big fan of using the artistic styles. Um, really what you're doing is you are creating works that represent and kind of look like uh, how a particular artist would be creating their own work. So I feel it's closer to kind of stealing someone's intellectual property versus, you know, this model that may have been trained on Game of Thrones and, you know, other things out there, uh, but you're not specifically copying like a frame from the show or something like that. You are sort of creating your own work here. Not to say that it's not, yeah, you shouldn't use it. I'm not trying to shame it or anything. It's just not my personal taste. I don't particularly like using other artistic styles. But for the video, we'll go ahead and explore that. So we'll open up our prompt and replace here. Uh, we will go ahead and add on an artist. So I pulled out a list of artists off the internet that people tend to use for some of these works. So we'll get those pasted in here and let's take off high resolution because that'll take forever. All right, we're happy with that. Let's go ahead and generate and see what we get. I messed up a bit here. Uh, I just put the name of the artist in the prompt. Uh, typically you don't just put the name, but you'll put by so that it indicates that it's art created by that person. If for some reason you happen to choose an artist and just put their name in and they're a well recognizable face, you may end up adding the actual image of that person to your artwork as opposed to their style. I'll go ahead and re-render this with buy, but I'll keep this and we can compare. Uh, maybe they'll look exactly the same or maybe we'll see a few differences, but let's go ahead and generate it with the, uh, the word buy. All right, so comparing the two, um, there's not a whole lot of difference. I'll go ahead and overlay the two on the screen here, uh, but for the most part, they're, they're pretty identical. There's, there's a few subtle differences. Um, again, really neat. Uh, I think each one uh, really takes it in a different direction. And of course, if any of these are your particular taste, then go for it. Um, honestly, I kind of like each one of these. Uh, but for the sake of the tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and clear off the artist and we will keep it with us creating some of our own works here. Next up, let's take a look at how different resolutions can affect our image. Now we've looked at the high res fix that will produce some upscaled images. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm actually talking about putting uh, resolution uh, markers in our prompt. So we're talking maybe like 4K or 8K sharp. Uh, you can use Unreal Engine, which I think we'll go ahead and do. So looking at it as if it was rendered out through Unreal. Um, again, some of these kind of blur together with style or medium. Uh, there's no hard definition of what goes into what. We're really just kind of clumping things together uh, and how they impact the, the image overall. Your medium tends to have a huge impact, whereas things like uh, resolution and maybe even style can have a, a smaller impact on the image. So taking a look, Unreal, uh, we'll go ahead and start up a script here where we will uh, substitute out Unreal for Sharp or 4K, 8K, etc. So with high res fix off, let's go ahead and generate and see how alternate resolutions affect our image. Now, is there a huge difference? Not really. Uh, you know, we're not changing the image overall. I'd say the subject is still pretty much in the same pose, doing the same things. Uh, the background sometimes has a few extra trees. Uh, you know, we're still walking mostly in the same way. Uh, we've lost some of the lava under us, under Unreal. Um, but yeah, there is a little bit of an artistic twist on each of them. So again, you need to go through and choose what type of look you're looking for. 
At any point along the way, you could take a snapshot of the image as you're building it, maybe run it through some high res upscalers to see you know, what it really looks like. It's kind of hard to tell when they're low resolution like this. Um, I think they all look pretty neat. Uh, we did lose our fiery Iraq. Uh, we still have somewhat of a fiery sword here under Unreal. Um, I'm not certain what we have here for Sharp. We've got a couple swords, uh, another odd thing kind of in both hands. So I feel with the extremely intricate and detailed, it's actually searching for a little more than what we have to offer. And I, I think maybe it's taking it a step too far. Um, I'm kind of a fan of this for Unreal. Um, maybe the background could use a bit more cleaning up. Um, but I mean, they're all, they're all pretty good. I went online and took another look at some of the resolution options people are doing, and I've seen depth of field used. So I went ahead and added it to the prompt here and rendered it out. Uh, I did do a high res pass on it and I'm actually pretty pleased with this. I feel we have some of the fire on the ground that we lost with the unreal, uh, but the other one still had. However, we have an, a real object in the hand that is, you know, a flaming weapon, which is pretty cool. Uh, we have some fire in the background. Uh, the trees in the background are somewhat realistic. I mean, they're artistic, but I think with some of those other renders, the background just kind of turned into round, rocky, smoke hybrids. Um, so... Pretty pleased with this. I think we'll use this for the last bit of the tutorial. This depth of field. Last up, uh, color and lighting and other effects that you may want to tack on. So there are many different options here. A lot of people go with things like uh, cinematic lighting or dark, edge lit, things that you'd hear about in a photograph tutorial where you're learning where to place your lights and you know, how to properly light your subject. Uh, there's a lot of control and there's a lot of options you can do. Uh, I selected a few common options here. Go ahead and play with this and take some time yourself to figure out what type of look you like. Like with the rest of them, we'll open up a plot here. Throw in um, our depth of field, and just so you can see what other options there are, uh, we'll have it replaced out with some of these other lighting, blurs, glows, silhouettes, uh, other types of options. So let's go ahead and turn off high res and generate that out. Taking a look, the depth of field is what we looked at in our high resolution. We have cinematic lighting here. Uh, we have some motion blur, glow lighting. We have a backlit, Fuji color, and silhouette. Again, um, all of them look pretty neat in their own right. I'm not certain what's going on with this seed where they really want her to have two things in her hands, uh, but that that is what's happening. It's interesting with cinematic lighting. Uh, we lost our sword, and this looks more like a jet of fire coming up behind. Um, again, I'm still a fan of the depth of field. I think the cinematic lighting here looks pretty good. I mean, they all look good, but I think without having to try to figure out how to handle these flame bursts and things in the hand. I believe these two are our best option. Now I really wanted to keep this to about 15 minutes and I see we're pushing over a half an hour. So I'm gonna go ahead and call it there. Uh, on screen here is the final image that I came up with. I'm gonna go ahead and make a companion video on showing how I took the prompt, which I'll be displaying here on screen now. How I took that prompt, ran it through a few more filters that are non-prompt related to generate the image we see. 
I hope you found this video informative. I really had a lot of fun making it. If you've made it all the way to the end, I appreciate you watching. If you have any ideas for the next video, please let me know.